Today in Historical Markers, we're still in Randolph County and we're going to go to the Ellis Grove, uh, Kaskaskia area. There, let me just tell you, it's just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So please, please stay tuned. Join us as we continue to cover markers in Randolph County, Illinois. Y'all, I got something different for you. Now we are in Kaskaskia, Illinois, historic Kaskaskia. It was the first state capital of Illinois. Not a whole lot left here. There's a few people that still live here, but get this. We are on the west side of the Mississippi River right now. Yes, we are. We are on the wrong side of the river. We're, we had to cross into Missouri to get over here, but it's still Illinois. It's just amazing. What happened was way back sometime, I don't know the year, uh, off the top of my head, the, the Mississippi River changed routes and it cut Kaskaskia when it reshifted off to the other side of the river. But Illinois retained uh, the claim of Kaskaskia. So here we are on the west side of the river, which is where it's over there, over that levee over there. See that water tower way back there? That's Chester where we were. And here is Kaskaskia. Now there are several, a couple markers, two or three markers here. We're going to get them all. Um, this is Illinois in the American Revolution. George Rogers Clark's capture of Kaskaskia in July 1778 doomed British control of the Illinois country. The occupation of Kaskaskia was the first step in Clark's plan to capture the western headquarters of the British at Detroit. Under authorization from Virginia, Clark raised about 175 troops. They arrived near Kaskaskia during the night of July 4th to 5th after a grueling two months journey of more than 1,000 miles. Most of the British had been withdrawn and Kaskaskia fell without gunfire. Clark's victory and the capture of the other frontier post opened the Illinois country to westward expansion. All right, Lewis and Clark in Kaskaskia, the French connection. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark arrived in Kaskaskia with 24 men on November 29, 1803. Here they acquired the expedition's third boat, and I cannot tell you what that is, Perot, maybe? After recruiting 12 more soldiers, the captains hired expert boatmen and interpreter Francois Lebiche, half France, half Omaha. Lebiche became an enlisted and valuable member of the Corps. They also hired some local Frenchmen to man their boats. These, oh my friend, I don't know French, engagés came to Illinois from France, Canada, or New Orleans. Some were born on the frontier, some were of Native, Native American descent. They were experienced trappers and tradesmen, familiar with the dangers the journey would bring. After spending the winter with the Corps in the Mandan villages, most engages, engages returned home, bringing letters, journals, plants, animals, and news of the expedition with them. All right. In 1803, around 500 people lived in Kaskaskia. Historians believe Lewis and Clark stayed with local merchant William Morrison. All right. This marker is for the Liberty Bell of the West. This bell, given by King Louis the Fifteenth of France to the Catholic Church of the Illinois country in 1741, has been in Kaskaskia for centuries. The people of Kaskaskia rang it in celebration after George Rogers Clark occupied the town on July 4, 1778, during the American Revolution. It continued to be rung on July 4th for many years thereafter. And there it is. There's the bell. And there's mural. Okay. All right, this sign is for Kaskaskia. 
From 1703 until it was washed away by the Mississippi two centuries later, the ancient town of Kaskaskia, the second settlement in Illinois, the territorial capital, and the first state capital stood two miles southwest of here. Fort Kaskaskia State Park and the Menard Home are memorials to this once prominent village. And as I told you when we were in Kaskaskia, that part of, of Kaskaskia used to be on the east side of the Mississippi and is now on the west side of the Mississippi, so is in Missouri, you know, on the Missouri side, but still Illinois. Um, but the state park is on the east side of the river. So don't get those confused, it's easy. Here we are today, um, outside of Chester, Illinois, on the way to Ellis Grove. Uh, yes, there's a train going by. We are at the home of Pierre Menard. Here's our first marker. It says, Home of Pierre Menard, First Lieutenant Governor of Illinois, 1766 to 1844. Now, the reason things are a little bit uh, grown up here, the grass and stuff, is they're not open yet. Um, it's still closed for the winter, so they haven't um, been here for the upkeep keep of the house. But we're going to go look for another marker right now. here is the uh, second marker here on the grounds um, this is the home of Pierre Menard first lieutenant governor of Illinois 1818 to 1822 here he died June 13th 1844 and that one was placed by the daughters of the American Revolution so there we go We are here outside of Ellis Grove, Illinois, and we are at the site of Fort Kaskaskia. I'm going to move a little closer here so that uh, you can see what I'm reading. It says, these mounds are the time-worn remains of a fort designed to protect the village of Kaskaskia. The town, founded in 1703, was the southern anchor of Francis Colony in the Illinois country. During the 1730s, French officials planned to replace the ruined Fort de Charte, Chartres, I have no idea, and somebody's going to shoot me, near Prairie du Rocher, or du Rocher, as we say around here, with a stone fortification at this site. But construction ceased when it was determined to be too expensive. By the 1750s, fear of invasion by the British led French officials to again plan for a major post on the Mississippi. They constructed a new massive fort, de Chartres, and planned a smaller post for this site. Construction of an earthen fort began here about 1759, but it was never completed. The unfinished fort played no role in the French and Indian War, which ended with the transfer of the Illinois country from France to Great Britain. A British 
officer visiting here in 1776 wrote of two dilapidated buildings and collapsed wooden gun platforms and reported the ditch parapet and ramparts entirely overgrown with bushes the british ignored this site and built a fortification within the village of kaskaskia kaskaskia passed to the new united states with the treaty of paris in 1783 which ended the Revolutionary War. In the 1780s, local bandit John Dodge made headquarters in the old fort. The U.S. Army reoccupied the post about 1803 and stationed troops here until about 1807. The old fort was last used by local residents, fearing attack by Britain's Indian allies during the War of 1812. So here is a picture. Now you can see on there that Kaskaskia River kind of separated the um, fort from Kaskaskia itself. But we are not certain of Fort Kaskaskia's appearance. This artist's conception showing the fort under construction is based upon archaeology and descriptions written in 1766. And if you look part further past um, the village of Kaskaskia in that picture you'll see the Mississippi River. Now after some uh, massive floods and maybe an earthquake or two um, things shifted and now part the Kaskaskia village is on the west side of the Mississippi. Everything shifted and the Mississippi changed its course and that part of Illinois, it's still in the state of Illinois, is on the west side of the Mississippi. Here's the next marker we're looking for here at Fort Kaskaskia. And this is looking for a few good men. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to lead a Corps of Discovery up the Missouri River in search of a water route to the Pacific. They arrived at Kaskaskia on November 29th, looking for new recruits. It says, as a clerk records the names of the men recruited at Kaskaskia, Lewis tells Private Gas he has been selected to join the expedition. A French boatman, also hired to go upriver, looks on. Lewis and Clark sought strong young men, familiar with the woods, good at hunting, and able to endure a long, difficult journey. They found 12 candidates from the troops stationed here, more than any other place along their route. And down here it, it lists the names of these members. Sergeant Patrick Gass, Sergeant John Ordway, Private John Bowley, Private John Collins, Private John Dame, Private John Robertson, Private Ebenezer Tuttle, Private Peter M. Weiser, Private Isaac White, Private Joseph Whitehouse, Private Alexander Hamilton Willard, and Private Richard Windsor. The quote says, On my arrival at Kaskaskia, I made a selection of a sufficient number of men from the troops to complete my party. And that was Meriwether Lewis uh, to President Thomas Jefferson, uh, 19 December, 1803. We are here um, still on the grounds of Fort Kaskaskia Historic Preserve at the Garrison Cemetery. Right here where the Kaskaskia River is. Yeah. And this is our marker here. It says, Garrison Hill Cemetery, heroes lie here. The bodies of early settlers are buried in this, this cemetery. They were moved here from three cemeteries in Kaskaskia Village. When floods began to destroy the village in the late 1800s, concerned residents acted to transfer the remains to a safer place. According to one account, 3,800 boxes, some containing entire families, were moved. Uh, part of the words are gone here. It said the cemetery, I think it says the cemetery was dedicated in 1891. In 1881, flooding caused the Mississippi to change course and pour into the Kaskaskia River. The village of Kaskaskia was not entirely flooded. 
but the changing current, I don't know what that word is supposed to be, would soon destroy it. By 1909, the old village had disappeared. But here is what things would have looked like. Um, all of, there's the uh, Mississippi River and there's where we are is here on this side of the Kaskaskia River. And Kaskaskia was between um, Kaskaskia River and the Mississippi River up here. And when the river kind of changed, it, cut, it, it flooded into the Kaskaskia River. So you can see here where the river changed, and this is where the Mississippi River is now, okay? So all of this was, was cut off, and there was some of it that is still there, but is now on the western side of the Mississippi. We are here, um, still on the grounds of uh, the historic site of Fort Kaskaskia, right um, overlooking the river. And the first marker we have is for the um, this beautiful shelter. I mean, it's really nice that they have here. And it just overlooks the river. It's beautiful. If you ever wanted to have some place to come for a picnic, this would be it. But it says, for more than 80 years, this shelter stood sentinel over the confluence of the Kaskaskia and Mississippi rivers. One of the most beautiful views in North America. Over the decades, thousands of visitors, families, and friends enjoyed the shelter for gatherings, weddings, reunions, celebrations, and celebrations. The shelter made memories for generations and for visitors from all parts of the world. Then, on the night of October 31st, 2012, an accidental fire completely destroyed the structure. Thanks to combined efforts of the Randolph County Historical Society, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, Randolph County, the Randolph County Progress Committee, and the Community Foundation of Randolph County, and generous gifts from these families and organizations, as well as donations from many others, this shelter was rebuilt for future generations to share and enjoy. And it was dedicated October of 2018. This marker's on the other side of the shelter here um, at uh, the Kaskaskia Historical Area. It says Kaskaskia Village was formed in 1703 by Kaskaskia Indians, attended by a French priest and fur traders. It grew to be the center of French life in the Illinois country. Occupied by British in 1765, captured for Virginia by George Rogers Clark in 1778, gateway to the Northwest capital of Illinois Territory, 1809 to 1818. First capital of the state of Illinois, 1818 to 1819. Now this one here is um, also on the side of the um, uh, shelter here at Kaskaskia. And it says, in the flood of April 1881, the Mississippi divided its channel and broke into the lower Kaskaskia River below this bluff, forming Kaskaskia Island. The historic town of Kaskaskia lay directly in its path and was eventually destroyed. Thus, the role played by Kaskaskia in the great drama of history closed in tragedy. This is one of the most beautiful views I've ever seen here. I mean, it's just gorgeous overlooking the confluence of the rivers. It's just beautiful. But there's several... Uh, markers along this walk and the first one says dedicated in memory of George Rogers Clark and his heroic men who captured Kaskaskia from the British July 4th 1778 erected by the state societies of Illinois Indiana Michigan Ohio and Wisconsin of the National Society of the Sons of the American Revolution read this. All right, right here there should be a another marker uh, that is for Beaver Island. And I'm it I'm going to read to you what would have been on it. It said Beaver Island, site of Old Kaskaskia, first state capital of Illinois, dedicated to Joseph B. Casso, 1890 to 1965. 
descendant of Castle the Trader who traveled up and down the Mississippi in the 1700s. And that's what would have been there. Um, it's missing. Should have like been right here on a, on a pole. Um, that's what it would have said. So um, one more last view of, of this. Well, one more last shot of this beautiful view. We're still here on the, where the confluence of Cascade Mississippi rivers are up here on this beautiful view and this one is for lewis and clark in illinois on november 28 1803 meriwether lewis and william clark arrived in kaskaskia with about 24 men here they recruited 12 more soldiers from the local fort including Pat patrick gas and john ordway they obtained a second pierogi and i have no idea my i gotta learn french and hired French boatmen to help move their boats upriver. They also hired an additional interpreter, Francis Labiche. Right here, uh, oh, where this beautiful view is, is this marker that is a uh, poem written by Lewis William Roddenberg, author of Sonnets. It says so right there. And it was, uh, this triptych was placed by the Illinois Organization of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution in commemoration of the signing of the first constitution of the state of Illinois, August 26, 1818. And so I'm gonna show you the poem. I, I am not reading this whole thing. I'm gonna spend, uh, you can pause to, uh, and, and zoom in to read the poem. But it is a poem. It's to a sunken city, Kaskaskia. There you go. Another shot of that beautiful view. I'm serious. If, you, if you've never been here, you got to come up here. This is gorgeous. This would be a beautiful place for a wedding. We are here in um, still off Route 3 between Ellis Grove and Evansville. And this marker says the American Bottom. The American Bottom is that 60 mile long strip of low land lying between the bluffs and the east bank of the Mississippi. Its earliest recorded history is written in the annals of France, England, and Spain. In the wars, these nations fought against each other and against native Indian tribes for dominion of the New World. Following the discoveries of Joliet, Joliet and Marquette, in 1673 and the exploration of La Salle in, in 1682, France claimed possession of the entire Mississippi Valley, extending from the Appalachian Mountains in the east to the Spanish Empire in the west. Here in the center of this vast expanse known as the Illinois Country, Louis the 14th erected a fort and settlers from Canada and France established the village of Cahokia in 1699, and the villages of St. Philippe, Fort Chartres, and Prairie de Rocher in Kaskaskia early in the 18th century. During England's occupation of the Illinois country, 1765 to 1778, she retained the American bottom as the center of administration for the area, renamed the Illinois province of Quebec. Virginia, likewise, established the American Bottom as headquarters for her Illinois County 17, in 1778 to 1781 when George Rogers Clark drove the British from the area. 
The American Bottom, part of the Old Northwest Territory, gained recognition under the government of the United States by being named the site of the first county established in Illinois in 1790, the capital of the Illinois Territory from 1809 to 1818, and the home of the first state capital. Well, that finishes up our portion with Ellis Grove and Kaskaskia in Randolph County here. So, um, stay tuned. See what else Randolph County has to offer. I am really, really bad about these signs, and I apologize. Edward keeps telling me to, to stick my arm out further and do different things, and I, I just can't. I'm not a good backer-upper with my car, and I'm not good at this backward stuff. So anyway, Ellis Grove and Kaskaskia is done. Stay tuned for more of Randolph County and what we're going to cover, and we'll see what we find.